welcome to chapter 2 of this course. In this chapter, we are going to talk about test. Everything that has to do with test, from headings to paragraphs to formatting of the test, which includes bolding, italizing, subscripting, superscripting, and, and underlining all those formatting styles we have. We are also going to discuss some semantic markup, like giving a quotation. We are also going to discuss elements like definition, abbreviation, strike true on your test. If you are running a, a discounted offer, you want to cancel one and then show the current prices. We are all going to do. We are going to tackle all of them in this test chapter. So HTML headings are defined with the H1 to H6 tags. I mentioned H1 which is our biggest heading so we have six categories of headings in HTML H1 becomes the biggest H2 the second biggest H3 the third biggest H4 the fourth up to what H6 H1 will display our biggest or our main heading like I said so we are going straight but before that those who cannot open the application can just go to your start menu and you can even see it here if you cannot see it you can just type visual studio code and it will be out now when you open it you should be on the same page with mine probably not the same page so you can be on the welcome page which is this let me close the one i've already opened i wouldn't save this so this is what so this is what my welcome page as well let's try and open a folder so you choose a desktop the location where you want to save your file let's create a folder html css css course now when you open this particular folder we are good to go but we don't have any files in there what did you, you just let's let's select this folder or test now you can see in our file explorer section of what our visual studio code our folder is what displayed here so every file we'll create will we'll save it directly into this folder so that it will be easy for us to what to find them this is our starting page we can create a file you can close this as well close to it you can see a new file icon or you can also come to file and what click on what new test file you know which one is fine you can click on new test file it will be saved in our folder let's click and choose the language let's choose html okay so html here let's save the first file in order to get the autocomplete feature i was talking about so let's save the first file into into this folder so you click on file you choose what save as let's name it index.html index.html i'll show you why it is index and then you can actually track the file part here the file directory so it's on my desktop there's a folder called html and css course and i'm saving it in there and then the reason why we save it to .html is for us is for the browser to be able to what to render it or to open it. So you click on save. You can see it directly under what HTML and CSS course straightforward. So we have saved our file, our first file, even though it is empty. We are saving it in order to get the features we want to use. So first of all, let's declare this document and HTML document. How do we do that? I explained it. So you use the left angle bracket, type in HTML, and then you do what? You use the right angle bracket. The moment you do that, it gives you the the end tag. Now our content comes between these two. Our content comes between these two. The next thing we have to do is to what? To bring the head and then the body right like we did so you click on your tab just to ident it 
to make it nice so you can open do what do a head close the head you have an opening uh, and a closing at the same time you can do a title the title goes into the head right so you do the title and you get what a closing tag for the title as well now then you come to the next line you can also do same for the body you just write only for the opening you get an opening and then closing at the same time when you do the what the opening alone now between the this big atm or this one and then that one you have what a head opening and closing one other feature i like about vs code is the moment i click on the body see what happens to this it selects this one so it tells me that i've what opened and i've closed it it is very very important not to forget your closing tag otherwise your code is not going to run the way you want it to run so that's why vs code is very very important when i click on atm or the starting it shows me the ending when i click on the body the ending it shows me that i've started it when I click on the head, it shows me the end tag. When I click on title, it shows me the title tag. Now, what do we do? We're supposed to write content between this. It's not compulsory, do, but you're supposed to write a title. So just let's let's write um welcome to this course. No, we have to write it, we have to use the name of our website. So let's write something. The name of our website. What do we want? To display on our title bar when people visit just like when you open Google you see Google on top what do you want us to open so let's just write HTML course let's do HTML course so that we will display HTML course on a title bar we are going to do it right now for you to see you can also decide to drop the head drop the title and then drop the head this way you can also decide to do it on the same line if you wish now the body let's keep the body now let's render the only the title to see whether our code is actually working now when you do this you do not have to what click save us again you must just click on what on save just to update your what your file okay to run this one on your browser there are two ways you can go onto your desktop you can go onto your desktop like this look for this particular folder open the folder and then you see what your index or HTML. you can double click on it here it will open using your default browser okay so we can see HTML course written at the title so this code we written in VS code this is what is giving us on our browser that is one way now in case you open your your file on your desktop like this and you are not getting this the logo of your browser it is not able to open with your browser you can just right click if you right click it's going to give you a drop down arrow you choose open with and you choose your browser or the browser of your choice now let's go back to our VS code. Now let's add some paragraphs and some headings. Let's add our first heading. Okay, our first heading. I'm going to type H1 to represent the first heading. You can see the ending automatically. Okay. Now you can see in this one I was writing lower cases. This one I typed upper cases. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. HTML is case insensitive so it doesn't matter the case you are going to use the element in okay it will still work perfectly let me use small h or lower case it doesn't change anything you can still continue to use your upper case welcome to this course okay welcome to this course let's save it you can just click on file click on save or you can do the control s to save let's go to our browser and you are going to what refresh this particular file because i've already opened 
the file you can see the file part here so what i will do is to what refresh it when i refresh it i will see welcome to this course exactly the way i typed it here now can you imagine i made a mistake i removed the this and i, I save my file control s and i come to my browser and i refresh what do i see i will see welcome to course so make sure what you are typing is actually what you want people to see welcome to this course control s to save it now that is the first thing i want you to copy this code okay if you want to copy copy this code come to the next line you can just hit enter and then just do h2 okay h2 and then h2 all right copy the same thing go control c to copy control v to paste do h3 come out you press enter you do h4 go to the end you end it h5 you end it h6 you end it now you come and copy welcome to course you can right click and choose copy like i said copy come between the h3 and h3 do a paste come here do a paste control v come here right click do a what a paste come to between and do a paste now let's save it control s or you can come to far and do save let's go to our web browser let's refresh this what do we see we see welcome to costs and this is h1 and it's our biggest what our biggest heading followed by this followed by that followed by this and followed by this the importance of the uh, heading or the subheading will let you uh, agree or decide on which of the headings you would like to use you can use h2 a couple of times it doesn't mean you can use h h3 once h2 once or h11 you can use it depending on what you want people to see so if you want them to see a very bold heading use h1 i mostly we recommend you use only one of the h ones only one h1 and the others the sub sub ones will be h2 you want to h use h3 to discuss one a head that is very very small you can also do that one as well that is what for headings now i told you we have the hierarchy from h1 to h6 someone will ask what about h7 let's try and type h7 and see if we have something like h7 in html in between it i'm going to type what welcome to course let's save it Control s let's come back to the our browser and refresh it you see we are getting a plain test just like a normal test will appear and not as a heading you see it is not even bolded this is automatically bolded they are all bolded automatically this is not because it is not a heading so h7 is not it's not an html what element okay i hope you understand it is not an html what element that is for for headings so if you don't know anything at all today we've been able to what to explain headings how to type them in our what, on our website or in our document let's open some p tags and type some paragraphs when i open the p it closed the p for me just like we were explaining you're supposed to write some content in between this p and the content should be displayed in your browser just as you want it so let me delete i don't need all this i don't need these headings let me just clean my code all right let me clean my code and in between this i type 
um, a paragraph. I am very delightful of taking part in this course. You put a full stop. Control S to save. And then what? We are going to our browser to see whether I will change. Now you can see, I am very delightful of taking part in this course. I am very delightful in taking part in this course. So you can add as many, many paragraphs as possible. This paragraph, you can, con in fact, you can continue and say, I hope I am welcomed. Put a question mark. It is an eye opener to be learning to be learning programming at this point at this point in my life full stop you save this control s or you can what update you see what do you see you can refresh your if you refresh your your folder here you are going to get an update version of your what of your html document so this is what you've actually what typed as a paragraph you can type as many 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 paragraphs many 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 paragraphs okay thank you for sitting through the headings and then the what the paragraph part of the test you are going to practice more more so the next will be formatting of those paragraphs we've inserted so i would like you to insert a lot more paragraphs okay a lot more paragraphs so that we can easily format them i also go and look for any test document you can go and get dummy tests and then you insert a lot of it so that our page will look a bit loaded with some paragraphs so that we can easily edit it okay at least five six paragraphs is okay continue in the formatting session hello we are still on our headings and paragraphs let me just add more more content if you don't have content you can open your browser and visit lipsum.com lipsum.com you'll be you'll find a lot of dummy test that you can use for your practicals and paragraphs and and what have you you can choose the language of your choice i chose english so i'm just going to add some some tests which i've copied onto my ms word so let me just copy this part as my first paragraph okay so i right click and i choose copy i come to my vs code I open a paragraph p tag and then I place this code this test code between between it okay when I do that let me also let me bring an h2 h2 under h2 I'm going to type another heading which is a subheading why do we use it this I'm going to then I copy it I copy it open my VS code and then paste it I'm just adding more paragraphs and then more ATM so let me do another paragraph for paragraphs we now have P1 P2 P3 paragraph is just P for all while inserting your paragraph some of your paragraphs may be very long it will be difficult for you to go through and then edit them you can even so you can come to view and then go to word wrap okay so that you can actually see you have a clearer view of all your the content on your paragraphs 
okay so I have for now I have three paragraphs and then three headings I think we can continue now so the first element you are going to use is the bold element bold probably you have some tests in a paragraph you would like to bold it how do we bold test so first of all assuming I want to bold this particular test which is reader what I do is I open the element and type B B is the what the tag name for bold you don't type bold everything in bold you have to do what type only b you can decide to you can cut it and then paste it inside okay bold let me bold some couple of other things let me bold this as well so let me just let me just cop, uh, cut this let me bold so b in between it you, you paste let me bold this as well the word making let me bold it let me bold this as well let me bold layouts and i paste it now i've bolded about three or four different tests let me save it Control s or i can save it Control s or file and then save come to my browser refresh this page now i can see all the my paragraphs my headings are also clear and the test I've bolded one is the word reader the other is layout this is publishing this is making all this has been bolded bolding means to make a test darker or thicken or deeper as compared to the other tests on the same line so that is what these are other tests if you check one is what one has been deepened and that is the test we have bolded so you can decide to bold a test to make it what stand out to make it what stand out apart from bolding we can also italize just like to to slant it a bit to slant some of the the test a bit so let's come to our my second my first paragraph let's try and slant some test let me slant the word dummy to slant a test or to italize a test we use what we use the i element the i element to what to italize a word let me italize the word type setting as well um printer you choose what you want to italize let me just save my way control s let me refresh my browser now you can see some of the things that have been italized the word dummy the word type setting the word printer you can use bold and italics to make your test stand out from the other test another uh, thing you can do is to underline a test how do you underline a test in HTML? what you do is use a u let's say this word popular i want to underline it on the browser on my website i want to what i want to underline the word what do i do i use the tag every you so you should know what each tag does i'll give you the list of the tag names bold which is b i tell you which is i underline is u okay so you use a u to what to underline a test you put the test you want to underline in between this opening and closing tag so you open let's say this name richard this name you want to what underline the name what do you do you open your your u tag and you close it in between the u tag in between the opening and the closing tag you want to enter your the test you want to want what you want to underline so let's save this for control s let's refresh our browser to see where we get some test underlined now you can see the word popular underlined you can see the name robert also what underlined so this is what how to do basic formatting you do a lot 
more formats. We'll do strike true. We'll do the superscript, the subscript. We'll do all those. We'll do definition. We'll do abbreviation. We're going to do black coat and the rest. We're going to do a line break the and a horizontal line. We'll do all those ones under this chapter test. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I hope you are enjoying it so far. And then looking forward in the next video. So see you in the next video. Yeah, hello. So far in our test chapter, we've treated bold, italic, underline. And we've also done headings and paragraphs. We are beginning to actually put content on our what? On our web page. So we are going to continue doing some basic formatting like subscripting and then superscripting. So let's go into our test editor again. Using the same test, we are going to format this. Now, assuming you want to write a date or you want to write a position of something, and then you want to write fit, I write five and I write what? TH. And I'm, I'm expecting. I'm expecting it to appear this way, five, with a th on top. I'm expecting it to be on top. Now this is a what? A superscript. If you are writing, let's say, a chemical symbol, let's say, CO2 or H2O for water, to make the two appear below the normal test line is what you call subscript, like this like to write h2 and o you have to make these two come what below the normal test line if you let it come below the normal test line it is called what a subscript if you let this goes above the normal test line it's called what a superscript so how do we do it in html just like in ms Word. in ms Word, it's just a simple tool you are going to use so you just highlight or you select this after selecting this, what you have to do is to come to this particular tool, which is what? Superscript. Just click on it. It goes below the normal test line. That is what we are going to do in what? In HTML. In order to display these things on the web page. So next time you see those things on the web page, you are supposed to what? Credit the, the web designer. Because it's one easy thing. It's a lot of code, man. So I want to raise this TH above the normal test line superscript has a tag name of sup i type th the moment i type th th will be raised above the normal test line on five let me also do a subscript let's say i want to write carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is uh, co co2 let's say at the end so i do c o but i want the two to come below the normal test line what do i do super script is sup subscript is sub so i just have to open sub tag that's the word the subscript tag the auto completion works for me and i type what two what do i do now i'm saving my file let's go and refresh our browser to see if the changes have taken place you see this now i've raised it above the normal test line and this one has gone below the normal test line assuming i do not bring the these tags before them and i just write the th here this particular th will not go above the normal test line and these two will not come below the normal test line why because the browser wouldn't know my intention of writing co2 the browser wouldn't know i'm writing carbon dioxide the, br the browser wouldn't know i'm writing a position which is what fit the browser will take it as if it's a normal test so let me save this without bringing it below, below and above normal test line let me just refresh my browser what you see is fit 5th on the same line none of them is about above the test line the chemical representation of what carbon dioxide co2 so if you want any of them to appear below the normal test line what you have to do is to indicate to the browser that i want this particular two
to appear below the normal test line just as we did at first by writing what the subscript and the superscript let me undo so when i save it and then i go to my browser it is able to what interpret my code properly okay here indicating a, a, a superscript here indicating a subscript we are going to do more in the next video we are going to explain white space horizontal line line break in uh next lesson all under the chapter test so see you hello we are going to continue with some few elements we are first of all going to talk about white spacing white spacing if we check through our previous code we have written anytime i let's say give more than one space multiple spaces and then i save technically if i was using let's say ms word or any other software i should be getting the number of spaces i left right but when i come to my browser and i refresh i still see one space I'm not seeing the multiple spaces I give. I'm not seeing that. That is what we call white space collapsing. You can also realize that each paragraph or each heading starts on a new line. Because this is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. Starting on a new line. This is a, a heading, another heading, and another heading. What about if I'm writing a test? let's say this particular sentence i want to break it into two i want to get to this end when i get to this end bring from the point the bring from this part bring it down to start on on the next line what do i do if i don't break the line it is going to continue till the line is what is full before it drops but i want to tell it i want to drop it because there are there are times that you would like to what you like to what drop your your lines you don't want it to complete the full test what do we do that is line breaking let's do that quickly line breaking so let's say i want to put a line break here line break i want to put a line break here and i also mentioned that there are some elements that are that are empty elements they do not have any content between them so the white space collapsing as for that it has nothing to do with what a uh, breaking of line so it doesn't have any particular element but for line breaking you want to break the line that has a tag and the tag is br br but it is an empty element so now see how it is going to be see how we are going to write it we bring the angle bracket we bring a br we give a space we bring the forward slash and then and then we do this other designers or other uh, programmers will also decide not to bring the forward slash but it's a very good practice so we bring b r to indicate the line break give a space bring the forward slash and then you bring the closing angle bracket it's just to tell you that it is an empty element and nothing goes between it now the moment i bring the br the line the first word that comes after the br goes to the next line let's save this and try it so far save let's go to our browser let's refresh i want to see that at this point we get what a line break it's a line break here this is where we place our line break just to force this particular sentence to drop that is what a line break you can do line breaks as at when you need them it's not all the time you you want your your test to come from this end right up to this place you may want to be breaking some of your lines so that's how you break the line br is an empty element so nothing goes in between it sometimes also you may want to put a horizontal line between let's say different content you are writing a play a different scene or a different section of your test you may want to put a horizontal line let's try that one too it's also what an empty element that means nothing goes in between the element 
is very very similar to very similar to br and that is what hr to represent horizontal rule you can apply the horizontal rule on this let me just apply it here and, and see what is going to happen hr okay i give a space a forward slash and i do this let me save it Control s let me come to my browser and refresh you see there's a line between this section and then this section this particular section and this particular section there is a line between to divide the content above and then below that is what hr it is called the horizontal rule you can apply the horizontal rule also in your code or on your web page if you wish to now we are going to talk about semantic markup when we say semantic markup they are just elements that are included on a page with the intention of not to change the structure of the web page but it is to add some extra information to the pages they are added with the intention of not to change the structure like the way bold italic underline changes the structure of the web page these are elements that do not change or that are added not to change the intention so you must try as as well as possible not to use them a replacement of changing the structure or with the intention of changing the structure they are to enable browsers to be able to show the content in a different way okay ha huh. they are used just to display text in a different way do not try to use it to change the looks of what of a particular content on the page the reason for using this element is that other programs or websites or other tools such as screen readers or search engines can use this extra information for example when you when you cite a particular uh, website let's say you cite wikipedia you cite google.com you cite uh, youtube and the rest they are going to register your page as one of the features or as one that has featured a quote from wikipedia so those ones are semantic markup okay they are used in adding extra information for instance if you want to stress on a particular um for instance let's go to our our uh, code editor and then give some examples there is an element called strong and there's another one called emphasis now let's take them one after the other let me delete let me clear this and just open another paragraph put this content uh, straight as a paragraph now i want to use strong on my web page and then strong is most of the time used to show an indication of how important a particular test is on the web page let me just open a strong let me add this the word intended let me also add the word structure structure strong and put structure let me save it and then open my browser and refresh what do i see i see that the intended and then the structure here have been bolded by default web browsers bold content that has been put in the strong element to put an extra stress on those words this is not to replace the word uh, the b element which is used technically for bold this will enable screen readers to put some stress on the word intended and on the word structure because we use the strong element it is not to replace the bold element like i said we are not using it to replace the structure of our web page another example is the 
is the emphasis. Let me add more test. Another example is the emphasis. Let me add this paragraph P. I close. I save. Now I want to emphasize on this particular test I've copied. What I'll do is I'll bring EM. Let me save it. Now see what is going to happen. By default, by default, the web browser should italize it. It should italize. So we have what? Strong. We have EM. EM is also used to what? Indicate to the browser that this particular thing within the content is of importance to me. So it italizes it. This is not to replace the italics we did earlier, which is the what? The I we did earlier and then the B we did earlier. This is just to add extra information, but not to what? To change the structure. We must get that one clearly. So that anytime you want to italize with the intention of italizing, don't use EM, but use what? I. Anytime you want to bold with the intention of bolding, what do you use? You use a B to represent the bolding. So you can clearly see that the EM is here, which is what? It is by default italizing on the web page. And this is, like I said, to add extra information and not to replace the traditional element we know for bolding and for italizing. Now let's do some quotations as well. Let's say you want to put a quotation. We have two different ways. We have a block quote and then we have a kill to represent a quote. So let's add some text. Again, let's add this particular line. Paste it as a paragraph. Now, if we want to write this as a quote, what do we do? We just we bring a Q, a Q element, Q element here, and then we will put this whole test. Okay, we we'll bring this whole test in between the element in order to what to give us the quotation. This is to bring a quotation marks from the beginning of the test to the end of the test that have been enclosed by the queue. So you can see that you can see inverted commas here. That's the quotation marks. It is clearly over there. So this is how to what put quotations on what? On short short tests. Okay. Let me let's do the let me add one more test so that we can use it to explain the block quotes I'm talking about. We have a block quote. Block quote by default, the browser's word ident. So it is what identity. Let's try it in the browser. Let's add one more one more quote, one more paragraph. And let's enter with enter our let's add one more paragraph now after pasting i want to add a block quote so let me come let me start from this place okay from this place and then i bring a block quote b l o c k you see why i like visual studio right i place this one between the two block quote elements i save it and i check my I refresh my browser you see it has been indented you see there's a space from the edge of the paper and there's a space from the edge or from the beginning of my screen to where the first test has actually appeared if you look at this one it has been aligned to the left all of them to the left you can see the quotation and then look at this there's a white space here that is the the identification I get or if you like indentation you get so by default it will indent every block code and to put quotation marks around every queue and then this one is an emphasis 
and this is strong we will continue with more and more semantic what element in our next video another example of a semantic markup is the abbreviation and the acronym so it is possible on your web page you want to put an acronym and then write the full meaning or embed the full meaning in it you don't want to specify or to write everything in full so you intend to what abbreviate it and then write the full meaning when it is clicked or when something occurs or when something happens it is possible to do that on your web page but in previous versions of html which is html4 there were separate elements for abbreviations and then for acronym the abbreviation tag is abbr and then the acronym is acronym with the full spelling acronym but in html5 and now both the abbreviations and the acronym can all use the element ABBR, which is what the abbreviation. So there were uh, there are no separate element for abbreviation and acronym. Even though when you use both of them now, the browsers are still able to render it. We are going to use uh, both in our examples so that you you actually follow and then be able to do some so we are going straight into our test editor i've already copied some abbreviations that i've typed I've, i just pasted it as a paragraph so you see abbreviation which is a b b r first of all it's a paragraph so you see a p and then the a p at at the end and you also see the abbreviation a b b r you see the closing of the a b b r you see a title attribute i will explain what attributes are the title attribute is used in writing the full meaning of what you have what abbreviated so here you see in inverted comments you see ghana and i've written gh so what you actually see on my visible uh, uh, content area of the web page or of the of the web browser is gh in GH is embedded the word Ghana. I will display it for you to see. So I say Ghana is a country in West Africa and has a lot of developers. That's the end of the paragraph. And I also wrote acronym. So I'm using both the abbreviation and the acronym. Even though now the acronym can also be what be put aside for now and then only ABBR be used for both acronym and abbreviation both of them work though so this is an example where I've used what let me separate it where I've used acronym to explain you can also see acronym instead of ABBR here you see what acronym here and it also has a title economic community of West African states and you see ECOWAS and in the closing tag of the acronym is what a mother organization of which Ghana is a proud member so let's save this particular file let's save this file okay and then refresh our browser let's refresh our browser so when I refresh the page I'll see my abbreviations here the moment I hover my mouse pointer on the abbreviation I see the full meaning written over there Ghana now when I hover my mouse pointer again on ECOWAS, I see the full meaning which is Economic Community of West African States. So what I've done is that I've used the, uh, the attribute, the attribute, the title attribute to, what, to indicate the full meaning of the word I have what, shortened or I've abbreviated. If you use the ABBR, it is going to work and if you use the acronym, this as we have used it is going to work the next thing you are going to look at is citation and definitions how to cite someone and how to define a particular or a new object on your web page it is possible that in your line of duty you'll be citing some books or you'll be referencing some books some documents elsewhere and then some uh, speeches that you are not the original author so it is possible you'll be referencing it says when referencing when you are what referencing a piece of work 
such as a book, film, or a research paper, the element can be used, which is which element? The cite element can be used to indicate where the citation is from. In HTML5, HTML5 should not be used in what? Referencing someone's name. But it is allowed in HTML4. And then by, by default, citations are italized. Let's try it straight to my editor. And I can indicate a, a paragraph here and type a very long time a very long time in africa there were three men namely dr kwame nkrumah nelson mandela and gaddafi so i would like to cite a very long time in africa for instance if long time in africa was a book or a novel i read and i want to cite it i can just bring the tag site here and then I'll put long time in Africa between the two tags to get my site element. So I get a very long time in Africa. That is for the site or citation. That is perfect. Now, when we say definition or when you're defining something, simply means when we use any jargon, any new word, any new technology. It could be in any field at all. And then we want people to understand that this is a new technology we are using. For instance, I, I bring another paragraph and I type in the paragraph to rain cats and dogs means to rain heavily. For instance, if this is what I want and let's say cat and dog is a new word I've used on my website. Or my web page I can decide to what define it now the the tag or the element defined is uh, uses DFN so let's try it DFN and then put cat and dogs cat and dogs between this these two um, open and close tags of defined let me save it let me refresh my web page now you can see that a very long time in Africa the long time in Africa which I use the citation or I cited is what is italized by default this is to indicate that it's a book or a novel or an article which is somewhere I told you it is bad practice to use citation for names even though you can do that okay and then this one is also what to define this is a new word so cat and dogs these are all not used in changing the structure because if you actually wanted to italize both this and that you could have used what italics which is i you remember emphasis also does the same thing em and then this now we are doing citation and definition you are still italizing this is just to make the screen readers appreciate what we have done okay and then so that programs or softwares will be able to render to render them appropriately <laughs> that's exactly why we are doing all these things they are very very important the last thing we are going to talk about uh, not the last thing though but one thing we are also going to talk about is address how to put the author's address let's say when i write i'm a, when i write an article on your web page it's supposed to indicate who wrote it my address so that people can reach me easily so yeah well, that is uh, what we are going to do now so to indicate the address of an author let me paste there we can see so the the name of the element is address a d d r e s s through you open it here and then you close it here and then enclosed it in a paragraph so this is first paragraph which indicates the email i will show you how it will come it will come as a link this a is an anchor we get to anchor very soon when we are doing links and then this href is trying to reference this hyperlink which i will also show you and this particular paragraph is the one that contains the address itself so let's save this Okay, so this is the part that contains the anchor, the href. It comes as a link. You see, Mr. Sewuni. And then this is the address 54 Anyapalas Town, Accra, Ghana. 
and this is the so in case you want to uh, send me a message directly through my email you can just click on this straightforward it takes me it takes you to your email client and you can send me the message so let's say I, I contribute to this particular web page I've written a very nice article and my address has been written just under it okay if you want to even visit my website for more for more articles to read you can enter a reference of my website the reference of my website in this link here and you can indicate here for more and this one is what the address of the author and this is what the email to the author thank you for having time to go through this video we hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video thank you we are gradually getting to the end of our semantic markup elements we are going to discuss the very last part but in this part we are going to talk about changing the content of a web page we are changing the content of a web page let's say let's say we have the word verb or mango but we later realize that we shouldn't have used mango we want to use onions what do we have to do you let people you insert the onions and then delete the mangoes and then let's say we we run a shop and then we sell some items we are running currently running a discount okay so the price of a particular item used to cost let's say a hundred Ghana cities or a hundred dollars but because of the discount you are running 50 percent discount now the price of the same item is now 50 dollars or 50 Ghana cities how do we indicate the old price and then the new price by striking through the old one and then the new one that is exactly what we are going to do in this lesson so follow me let's get some tests and then insert a paragraph i told you you can always get a test by going to lipson so let me get this test oh that's too much let me just get this test just a few to this end let me just copy it control c and then p between it let's insert what we have copied and then let's say we decide to change this test to word we are going to bring an element called delete del to mean delete and then put test in between and then now bring the new word we want to replace the test with which is word so let me just bring insert ins to represent insert and then let's see word let's save this and then refresh our web page html course refresh now you can see that the word test has been cancelled and the word word has been inserted by default when you delete a word it strikes true and then when you insert a word it underlines by default to indicate that this word test is no more in used but this is in use and this has replaced the deleted one now the last thing is to indicate a strike true for instance i run a discount now i want to indicate to the general public or on my web page that this is no more the current price but this is the current price i could still use the delete and the insert but when i use delete and insert it is going to underline this i don't want it underlined i want only the old price striked out what do i do what i can do is to indicate the strike true word so let me just come to where the hundred dollars is and indicate the strike true strike true is represented by s the s tag let me just remove this it and then do the i do an s to close it let me save it control s and then refresh my page now you can see on my web page 
Python cost for sale was hundred dollars now fifty dollars was hundred dollars now fifty dollars now this brings us to the end of chapter two which was test we are going to chapter three which has to do with list i'm going to talk about all types of lists ordered on ordered definition list everything you need to what understand under list when talking about a web page or a website see you in the next lesson